Bill Price. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I'm very pleased to be able to speak in support of this very welcome measure. But I would just like to say that this is a, should only be the start of what we do to uh, improve the working conditions for seafarers, not just seafarers who are around our own waters, but, but those more globally too. Because it is a fact that when we look at you know, where, where companies are able to exploit migrant labour and low workers, perhaps our shipping industry is perhaps one of the most notorious. And you know, following a successful World Cup in Qatar, where lots of issues regarding migrant uh, workers were raised, I think shining a light on some of the practices in the shipping industry would be well welcome. Now, as everyone's referred to, the uh, acts of industrial vandalism perpetrated on British workers by P&O ferries was absolutely disgusting. Um, I'm pleased that the, the whole House came together at that time to condemn that practice. And I, can, I commend the government from being quite fleet of foot in terms of bringing uh, this legislation. It does actually prove that the government can be fleet of foot when it chooses, so I hope to see more of this when uh, problems are, and particularly injustices are, are highlighted. But of course this bill is very limited to that EU traffic uh, and, and particularly on the short seas. The kind of traffic that goes from it and, jo and uh, attends our ports in Hull and Dover and obviously Holyhead. Uh, but as I represent, uh, as I like to describe it, the, the port's capital of the UK in Thurrock, where, where the, the port of London moved east from the docks to my constituency. Um, this has been a very uh, a challenging period for us because, of course, DP World own the new London Gateway port, which is the, big, uh, the newest deep sea port uh, in, in the country. And whilst we've been working hard to have uh, good relations uh, with the British management of that port, um, we were equally uh, just as condemnatory uh, of the actions of, of the parents through P&O ferries to those workers. I'm very keen to ensure that the management at London Gateway did understand that we in Thurrock thought that was completely unacceptable and we obviously wanted to levy that point, not, not least to protect the thousands of workers in my constituency who are employed by that company. And I think we, this is very important that this House sends that message uh, to those, those companies that wish to invest in our country, that there are things that we will not put, put up with and that what passes for, good, for reasonable employment practice in their own jurisdiction will not pass in ours. And it is very important that that principle is, is uh, hammered home. But I should also refer to the fact that we also have uh, ports uh, in Thurrock that serve European traffic, and they, they run for a very di different uh, business model than those for which perhaps this legislation is directed to. And, and I highlight particularly uh, the uh, integrated port and, and shipping operation run by CLDN at Perfleet, and of course Britain's newest port at Tilbury 2, which is also uh, serving uh, the European market. And it's a very different model because we are talking about what is unaccompanied row row freight. Uh, so whereas at Dover uh, the uh, lorry, the HGV driver will accompany uh, their, 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 their uh, cargo straight on and off uh, and hit the road. Clearly, those ships that are arriving from Europe at Perfleet and at Tilbury are undertaking a much longer journey uh, to, to make that crossing. Uh, they're not accompanied by the driver. The driver drops off at one end and picks up at the other. And I just wanted to just, just register with, with ministers that perhaps the legislation uh, and the, the, the regulation that is being currently drafted to address the particular situation uh, that we, we are looking at with those short, the short seas shouldn't uh, be uh, used perhaps more sensitively uh, with the other kinds of economic operation. Um, but in particular, I really wanted to highlight the issue of deep sea traffic because, as has been highlighted, these minimum wage regulations are really directed at those ships which will be regular, uh, regularly attending uh, uh, British ports. Now, the truth of the matter, matter is that the ports at Tilbury and at London Gateway are dealing with very large ships that are doing multiple stops around the world. So, and typically, you know, 50 years ago, uh, some of the people working on the, those ships would be my constituents. Today they're not. Today they're not because, frankly, my constituents would be too expensive. So we have ships which are staffed by Filipinos, Thais, 
actually a lot of Ukrainians, uh, and I'll come back to them uh, a little later. But again, you know, we, we do need to think about the welfare of those crews <coughs> too. And I know that the government, uh, through its role in the International Maritime Organization, does make these uh, cases. But if there's one thing that I am grateful to P&O Ferries for, is it has given us the opportunity to properly shine a light on, on how uh, our, our global seafaring population uh, does need uh, more support uh, and more attention paid uh, to uh, their, their welfare. Um, we've heard about who the most appropriate uh, uh, enforcement authority should be, and uh, I, I echo what my, my honourable friend, the, who's the chairman of the Transport Select Committee, said when he referred to the MCA. And I've seen at first hand uh, how the MCA has taken action to regulate behaviour towards, uh, towards uh, seafarers uh, during the pandemic, when we had in Tilbury a number of cruise ships who were stranded at Tilbury, and frankly, the uh, seafarers uh, on, on those ships were in a terrible state. They didn't know how long they were going to be stuck there. Their, their welfare conditions were, were truly appalling. And I, and I would highlight that the MCA took very decisive action uh, on those, uh, in those circumstances to improve the welfare for those seafarers. So I'd, I'd just highlight uh, that uh, with, with this government. And just to, to, to really finish, I, I just really want to perhaps highlight some of the, the, the activity that happens uh, around the port communities to support seafarers, because we're all heading towards Christmas. And, you know, people don't really think about how the item that they're, that they're purchasing from a shop and wrapping up to put under the Christmas tree, they don't really worry about how it got there. And, and the fact is that we absolutely rely on our seafarers to keep us fed and watered. They did a fantastic job during the pandemic. Everyone turned up to supermarkets, the, the, the shelves were full. That's because the seafarers kept working. And I, my, um, my honourable friend, the member for Whitney, is agreeing with me because he did a fantastic job championing them. And, and uh, during that period when I was doing my best to represent the welfare of that community, he was, his door was always open and, and I thank him for everything he's done. He was a truly excellent uh, maritime minister who did much to, to escalate, elevate the, the, the uh, issues regarding maritime uh, within uh, government. But as I say, we don't worry too much about how things get there, but the truth is that there are uh, lots of, uh, yeah, there are people who are not paid very much money, work in terrible conditions to make sure that we get all of those. So I want to highlight the work of the uh, Queen Victoria's Seamen's Rest for the work that they do, and I'm very pleased to be able to support uh, what they do in Tilbury. And I can advise the House um, that uh, actually, it's my, my annual treat is I go down to the Seamen's Rest in Tilbury and wrap Christmas presents because we give 3,000 presents uh, which are collected by voluntary donation. Every seafarer that passes through the Port of London gets a present and a Christmas card from my constituents. And the present will consist of toiletries, chocolates, some London mementos and a hand-knitted hat. Uh, made by the knitting community in Tilbury. It's a very special thing we do, but it, 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 and it's special because they, the, those seafarers are away from their families, but they have that gift that someone has thought about them. And I particularly want to highlight as well uh, the welfare of the Ukrainian seafarers that will be passing through uh, the port of Tilbury uh, this Christmas. They're obviously away from their families, clearly very worried about them. And I'm very pleased that we will also be giving them SIM cards so that they can uh, uh, contact their families. And I thank the Department of Transport for funding the Wi-Fi routers that are able to give us that facility. So without further ado, I wish this bill well. I wish it to be on the statute book as soon as possible so that we can actually raise the standards of, 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 of behaviour towards those uh, seafarers that work in our European seas. But I just want to log this very clear message to ministers that we must do more to raise those global standards for our seafarers too.